In the last part of the lesson, we saw how to create a signet ring using our JCD Lite signet templates. In this part of the lesson, we'll use what we have learned to create a class ring based on our signet ring. So we'll come into our counter design studio and open up the signet ring. Okay, let's file, save as, and we'll save this new file as class ring. Okay, so we have our history for the signet ring here. First of all, I'm going to increase my ring size. Let's bring it up to a US 11. Okay, I'm also going to switch out my ring top sketch. Okay, so we now have to do this using our ring top profiles. But in this case, I want to create my own ring top profile. So I'll simply edit in the history the ring top sketch. Okay, now like I mentioned before, if you want to create our own ring top profile, our own sketch, we have to create it in two halves like this. Okay, so you'll find that all of the ring top profiles are in two halves. Okay, so if I want to round top let's say seven point five millimeters radius total diameter of 15 okay, we will get rid of the previous ring top sketch so we need it in two halves it's very easy to, easy to do use our trim slash split at point command pick the curve okay and then we're going to let it snap to the 12 o'clock position and the 6 o'clock position okay it, it will only snap to these points if we have our smart picking enabled so let it snap in there. We do not want to pick segments, otherwise this will erase the segments that we have not picked. So let's just confirm it like this. There we have split our circle in two halves, as is required for the history to regenerate. So now we can exit our sketch. There we go, our history is regenerated. Okay, so whilst I'm here, let's say we want to create a square top, okay, you'll probably be able to find this in our ring top profiles but I'll show you the process anyway. Since we need it in two halves, we can't just create a square like this, okay, because it is in four parts. If we exit now, okay, it fails. So what we need to do to get it into two halves if we just put in a tiny blend at our corners. Okay, it's a really insignificant blend, so it will still appear as a corner. Okay, but it allows us to concatenate these curves to make one whole curve. Because in order to concatenate we need to have tangencies. Okay, so now we have all of these four sides plus the blend. Come in with our split. Split this one. The center point. Do the same for our bottom. Now we can catenate the two halves. Okay, one whole curve there. This one's still split up. Concatenate. Okay, so now we have two halves. When we exit it regenerates. Okay, so that's something to bear in mind when you want to make the modification yourself. Bring back our circle. Okay, let's change our parameters a bit as well. I'm going to increase my side arc, side arc of radius. Let's also make it a thicker or wider ring, more chunky. Yeah, I'm also going to bring down my ring top. I'm going to move it down. To do this, I bring back in the history my ring sketch. Okay, so this is the template sketch. If I show dimensions here, okay, this is the basic solitaire closed. Okay, we have this datum control here. 
we could choose the center stain datum. Okay, in this case, we're using it to define the top of the ring. So I'm going to move it down to a three. Okay, and that adjusts the height of the ring above the ring finger. Okay, so let's blank out this template sketch again. Okay, so for our class ring, we need to have a ring top where we can put in some lettering and our stone. Okay, so this is like a halo. So we can come in with a halo template and put this on the top of our ring shank. Okay, if we place it on this datum, give it an elevation. Then we can make modification modifications to our gem lengths, our gem melee size. Okay, so I'm just going through this quickly as an example. Obviously, you'd want to trim this out or reduce the height. Then we can come in with our stone and a bezel and our lettering in here. Okay, but I'm going to make one from scratch this time. So let's undo the halo. I'm going to right click, insert a datum. Okay, I want a front orientated datum. So I'll come into my X. Z plane offset. Okay, I don't want an offset. Zero origin. I want it to be at the ring top here. I let snap to my center stone datum. Okay, the orientation is fine. I'm going to remove the rectangle. Confirm the operation. Here's the datum. Okay, now I'm going to insert a sketch on this datum and create a profile. That I can then revolve around this circle to create my halo. Okay, so let's do this right click, insert sketch on this datum, use centroid defined by plane, bring the centroid to the center of the datum. Okay, now I'm going to reference using my first method, construction geometry, just reference this line. Okay, it's going to throw in a horizontal line. Let's hide the part level, come into our plane view. Okay, so we're going to create a profile for rotation now. We're going to draw, I'll start off by creating a simple shape, four sided shape. Okay, I'll add in some dimensions here. Okay, I don't want to dimension our reference curve, so I hold down the Alt key to navigate to the second entity. There we go, drag this one down. Four. Okay, so I have control now over this shape. This is the basic shape that we will revolve. Okay, we can set up variables for these values if you want to and then control them from our parameters panel. Okay, I want to add something to this and that is the channel. I want to create a channel here for my text. Okay, now I'll do this by creating a rectangle that cuts into this shape. To create a channel, I will then trace the profile. Okay, so let's come into our drawer again. Let's just start here. I'll have the perpendicular constraint snap in. I want it perpendicular to my line across here. Okay, so this will be creating the channel when I trace the profile. Let's add a dimension constraint to the width of our channel. Okay, let's say two millimeters. But now we want this channel the center point of the channel to be constrained to the center point, the midpoint of this line. So to do this, we'll create another line. Let it snap first of all to the midpoint of our lower rectangle edge. Bring it up perpendicular. Have the perpendicular snap 
Okay, that was it. Right, I'll redo that. Midpoint, perpendicular. Okay, now we come into our constraints tab. Use our point to midpoint constraint. We want to constrain the midpoint of this line to the endpoint of this line. So we pick our two endpoints, midpoint, okay, and it's snapped in there. So now when we increase our channel width, it stays centered. Okay, and we can also add in a constraint for our channel depth. Say 0.5. Okay, now we come in with our trace profile. We trace the profile that we want to revolve. Okay, and it will not take into account parts of this sketch or other lines. Okay, I cancelled that, I should have confirmed it. Okay, so that is our trace profile. And now when I increase or change my dimensions, my trace profile will stay with that outline. Okay, so I'm going to exit back into my part level. There's our profile. Let's revolve it. Shape, revolve, profile, picking the sketch, axis, the Z axis, revolve type, one sided, 0 to 360. 360. Let's bring it in as a base. We don't want to Boolean add it to our shank just yet. And we'll have no end caps. Confirm the operation. Okay, and there is our ring top. Okay, I think I might want to tweak this. I think I want to bring down this wall, this side slightly. Let's inquire the distance in the inside. See what stone size we can get in here. Okay, it's seven millimeters. Okay, so I think I'll tweak my sketch a little bit. Right click. Edit sketch. I think I might drop this value down to 3.5. Drop this one down to 0 0.5. Maybe increase my width slightly. Okay, this looks good. Let's see how it replays. Okay, I think I'm happy with this. Save the work. Okay, now let's come in with the text that we want to place in here. We're going to create a class ring for Woodbridge High School. So we're going to come in with the text Woodbridge and High School. Okay, so let's do this. We've seen a few ways to create text on surfaces and then inlay them. Okay, we do have our text in UV space tool. Okay, this could work in this instance. So the font size will be 2 because we know we have a 2.25 channel width. Okay, we're going to need a rotation in there. Okay, so that's alright, but it's coming in a bit big. We do have trouble with the seam line of our halo. Okay, we can always just rotate our halo to get rid of the seam line. Okay, but this time I'm just going to come in with a different method. I'm going to insert a sketch. Place the text in the sketch and then project it to this face. So I'll right click, insert sketch. Now since we will be projecting, we can use any plane so long as it has this top orientation, the XY orientation. So I'm just going to pick the center top datum. Then we right click, let's reference our lines. Okay, if we don't see a reference on the line because it jumps down to our plane like this. We'll hide the part view, plane view. Okay, so here's where our text is going to come in. Let's go into our ready sketch text. Here the text I know. I'm going to start off with Woodbridge. The font, let's go for 
aerial. The size I know is two millimeters. Let's give it a bold style. Now I'm going to select a curve as well. I want my text to come in on a curve. So we pick this as our reference curve. It's going to be bound to this curve. Okay, so at the moment the text is coming in the wrong orientation. Okay, if you find this happening, it can often be because the point at which we pick our reference curve can influence the orientation of our text. So try picking it elsewhere on the curve, okay, like this, and we have different orientation of our text. Okay, so this text does look a bit big at the moment. Let's drop it down to 1.75. Still is kind of large. Let's try a 1.5. That's better. We'll place the text right there. Confirm the operation. Okay, maybe that is a little out of line. Let's check. No, that's not bad. Okay, let's come in with the bottom text. Text is going to be high school curve, this inside one, orientation, the origin. Okay, we're going to have to pick this curve at the top. That gives us the correct orientation. And maybe we can make our lettering slightly larger. Maybe even a bit bigger than this. Let's try 1.75. Okay, maybe that was a bit too much. I'm being a bit finicky here. Okay, we'll also come in with some circles. Small circles just for text dividers. Okay, so there is our text and our text dividers. Now we'll come in, shape, sorry, wireframe. We're going to use our project to face command, project our sketch to the face direction, z-axis, there's our echo, our preview. Okay, that looks okay so far. Confirm the operation. Let's see how an inlay goes. Shape, inlay, okay, it's under the merge if you can't see it. Inlay, pick the face, okay, the curves. In fact, what I should have done to make the picking of the curves far easier is to have come in, let's redefine our project. In the project, change the curve color, let's say to this pink in the lower left hand corner. Our text comes in as that pink, then when we inlay, Pick our face, our curves, we can use our attributes and entity filters, color, the pink, include only that, window pick them. Offset, say 0.4, direction will leave so it's normal to the face. Confirm the operation. Okay, there is an inlay. Okay, we're having a few issues, our text might be a bit too. Yeah, I think our text is touching in here. That's thrown off our inlay. Let's undo the inlay. I'm going to edit this sketch, our original sketch profile. Let's just bring out, increase this slightly, 3.75.
then increase our channel a little bit let's say 2.5 exit back there we go our text is looking a bit more spaced out now let's see how the inlay goes pick the face window pick our text confirm there you go you see that's gone much better there so ensure that you have enough room for your text to be embossed okay let's see if we can add a little draft into our text if possible I do recommend always having a draft on the text to improve manufacturing let's inquire the distance okay 0.3 that seems alright I was worried that this lettering is getting a bit too small but we should be alright with that you can always change the font the aerial black is usually a bit chunkier ok maybe I want to see if I can add more of a draft let's try and fill it Firm. Okay, we'll save the work. Okay, so we're at a good point here. This design is going well so far, but I would like to point out one thing. Remember, we have the seam line in our halo. The seam line can throw off our inlay sometimes it can make maybe drafting more difficult okay so let's show you what I mean by this I'm just going to undo or come prior to my inlay come prior to my project as well if I just revolve I'll move the sketch I'm going to revolve it about the z-axis just a little bit so that my lettering is going to cover the seam when I project it. Okay, now when I inlay it, we have to repick these curves. Okay, the inlay is failing. Let's try an inlay from scratch. The face curves. We will have no draft. Okay, this is what I mean, the steam line is coming in on our lettering. Okay. And this is throwing off our inlay, it's not allowing us to put the draft in. Okay, it's failing. So if you do encounter this, okay, and you want to keep your text same orientation all you have to do is rotate to your halo shape okay so I'm going to undo all of this I'll come prior to my inlay okay now we can't see the seam line here so that we can see it we come to our wireframe we'll use a point, let's change the color to red our first point, right click along, you want to go along the inside edge a distance of 0% so we're at the starting point second point, along distance okay, or percent, 0% percent again confirm, okay, so this shows our seam line which at the moment is fine as we saw before but let's say we do have lettering covering this what you need to do is pick the move command ok we're going to move our halo shape and 
the seam curve at the same time direction the z axis okay, and you'd want to move rotate okay, so that your seam line is not intersecting any of your curves okay so we were fine but I'm just showing you this in case that you do have intersections across the seam line this is how you go about you want to rotate your halo so that it is not intersecting your text like this okay then the inlay should go without a problem across the seam line and you should be able to add in your draft okay so like this Okay, the fillet is being thrown off there. Okay, so that's how you go about moving the seam line. Okay, you just have to think about it intuitively. Save our work. Okay, now let's come in with our center stone. I want to place a cabochon in here. Let's see what size we have, inquire, distance ok so we have about 7.5 millimeters in there let's come in with a 6.5 millimeter cabochon gems and settings, play stones cabochon, we want the round, let's change the color say a blue dimensions okay if you don't see the correct dimensions for the round this is not the correct just move your carousel a bit come back to the round okay it sometimes it's thrown off a bit there come in with your dimensions 6.5 okay we'll give it an elevation of 2 millimeters so it's in line with the top of our halo, our ring top. Okay, maybe I want to go a bit bigger. Let's go 6.75. Confirm. Okay, there's the cabochon. Let's come in, create a quick bezel for our cabochon. First of all, we need to shape merge my cabochon as a base so it's a shape now come to the extrude tab in fact let's blank out our ring shank first of all so we can see what's going on we'll extrude our bottom edge one sided we'll bring it up to around here let's boolean add it to our halo shape okay, maybe I want to thicken it slightly just a little bit okay, I'll confirm the operation there something went wrong, let's right click, redefine Okay, we want our end caps. Okay, there we go. Now let's come in with another extrude. This time I'm going to extrude the lower edge of my cabochon. Okay, it's in two halves, so I'm going to right click, insert curve list. Confirm. Okay, now I'm extruding the curve list, extruding it up as a cut, and I want to cut it only from this shape, not from my cabochon. Okay, so there we have a quick bezel for the cabochon. Okay, let's add in a chamfer in here for rendering purposes. Say so 0.2. We will also fill at the edges. Okay, 
Okay, let's run some chamfers in here as well. Let's unblank all. Okay, I'm thinking maybe this edge of the bezel is coming up a bit too high, but I'll live with that for now. Let's come in with a fillet. Save the work. Blank out the dimensions from our ring sketch. I unblanked it because I unblanked all. Okay, now let's come in with some shield on the side that we can put text in and other images. Okay, so I'm going to insert a sketch using my same method. I'm going to create the sketch, create the shape in the sketch, and then project it to the faces. So let's first of all reference our areas, how much space we have to put in our shield. Show target. Okay, I'm going to come in with a line for control. Then two more lines. I'll constrain them. Point to midpoint. Uh -huh. I want to constrain that point to my origin, so I'm going to do a point coincident constraint to bring them down. There we go, now let's add in dimension constraints using our quick dimension tool. First of all this one, let's say 12 millimeters. Here we go, 3.5. Chuck one in here as well. Let's say 12 for this as well. Set this to be construction geometry. Right click, construction geometry by toggling the type. Okay, so now we have control over these dimensions. Let's come in with an arc. Like so, I'm going to double click on here, or we'll right click modify. I'm going to link this dimension up to our left radius dimension by using our pick dimension. Pick this dimension. Okay, there we go, we see it matches. Let's change the color attributes, let's change it to a gray so we know that we're not modifying this dimension anymore, it's linked up. We can modify this radius, step size one. Okay, so now we're modifying them both. Yeah, okay, I think this will do around 20. Okay, so there is our basic shield sketch. Okay, we don't need to trace the profile because we have turned our inside line to construction. We have a complete closed sketch here. Exit back out onto a part level. Okay, so now I want to project this curve onto my two side faces and then I will inlay them. Alternatively, I could come in as we've seen before using our split with curves command. Okay, a split with curves, I can split the faces to the projected sketch. Okay, and that's the method we'll use. First of all, I'm going to shell shell my signet ring to remove some of the excess material. So let's pick the shape. I want to leave this side open and we'll have a value of negative one millimeter so we'll have a negative one thickness or a one millimeter thickness I should say. Confirm. Okay there is our shell one millimeter thickness. We're just removing excess material there. Now I'll come in with my freeform split of curves, pick the face, okay, make sure you pick the face not the shape the face, the curves, it's the sketch. Now I need to come in with the projection because my curves are not currently on the face yet. 
I need to project them, we'll do bi-directional, both directions, along the x-axis, okay, so we have to project both sides, see how this goes, we had the projection and it should have split the face straight away, and it has, okay, so that's a nice quick way to do our projection and then instead of inlaying this surface, inlaying with the curves, inlaying with the projected curves, you can simply perform, perform a face offset. Pick the two faces and then we can offset them. Let's say negative 0.5 Confirm Okay, so there we have the surface. We can input text on here and other designs to finish off our class ring. Okay, maybe you want to add in a fillet or a chamfer if possible on these edges. bright cut then we can come in with some text let's do this let's this time use our design sketches tab we we'll use our text and UV space tool with the aerial text let's say we'll just place a date 2015 font size start off with a three point Okay, we're going to have to rotate this. Okay, we want to rotate it negative 90 degrees. Okay, maybe our font size, let's use the Arial Black actually for a thicker font. We'll bring our font size down to a 2. And then we can play around with our spacing. And our stretch. Okay, confirm the operation. We can then inlay the curves, pick the face, pick the curves. Okay, I'm going to use my attributes filter. Let's try with no base first, no uh, draft first of all. Okay, that's gone. Okay, seems like we have a little uneven patch here. Okay, it's an insignificant amount of material. Okay, so it wouldn't really matter. Only I believe this will throw off the chance of a draft. Okay, yeah, it doesn't allow us to draft because of this. Okay, so you may encounter sometimes. few issues with the UV text in space, text in UV space tool when you want to inlay the curves. In which case we can use our other methods. Okay, let me show you another one quickly. Now say we want our lettering to come up into the very corners. We want it to stretch up in here. Okay, so with our UV text, it follows the UV lines of the face. Now we can check the UV lines, the isocurves of the face, by using our isocurve on face tool. Pick the face and see where the isocurves are running. Okay, now with this face, you can see the isocurves are running vertical and horizontal. They're not following the contours, the curvature of this face. Okay, so if this happens, and if you want the isocurves to follow, the curvature of the face so that you can use the UV text to get text into the corner you may want to redraw your face, recreate your face so that you have the isocurves running how you would like them. To do this one method is to simply erase the current face. Okay, We have the edges there we can come in with our bi rail loft tool. Okay, We could use other tools such as the n-sided surface FVM patch, 
let's try the by rail loft first we're going to loft picking our two paths as the edges our profile is going to be this edge all the way up to this edge here we're going to sew it to our ring shank Okay, confirm the operation. Let's just check that our shape is still closed. Right click, entity info, closed, good, we have watertight shape. Now let's check our ISO curves. Let's see how they're running now. Okay, and as you can see, they're not running vertically anymore. They are in line with the curve. They're in line with the face curve, sorry. So now if we come in to our design sketches ring tab, use our text in UV space tool, type in some text, let's say a name, font size 2, rotation, we know we need a negative 90, or not, we need 180. Okay, you can see how now, if I just place this text here, the text is following this UV lines into the corners because we have replayed or recreated our face with with the UV lines that we want. Let's say 2.25. Confirm. Okay, so you can see how it comes into corners, whereas with this one it doesn't because our UV lines are up and across instead of across and curved. Okay, so let's see if the inlay is working. The face, pick our curves, we use our attributes filter, pick the curves, offset 0 0.4, let's stick with a zero draft for now. Firm the operation. Okay, it's coming through. It's a little bit skewed. Let's just see if a project, if we project our curves to the face just to make sure they're on the face. Let me unpick these curves. Use the attributes filter, project the face. Let's retry our inlay. May get rid of those glitchy bits. And it actually does. Okay, so if you do experience little areas like this, try projecting the curves, the UV curves, to the face prior to the inlay. That may be the cause of the issue, is simply our UV text is not exact on getting the uh, curves onto the surface. So let's try and correct our previous one as well. Let's try that wireframe, project to face. Inlay, repick the curves. Okay, and that does actually help for that one as well. Let's see if we can get a draft on there now. I can't tell if there is a draft in there. Okay, there is. Okay, so that is a way of solving that issue. Replay the rest of history. Let's give these a draft. Okay, but that is the two strategies. If you want your text to come into the corner, okay, you need to recreate the surface so that the UV lines are how you want them to be. 
Okay, so finally we can add in, you know, a few more images in here. Let's come in with our emboss tool. Okay, I'm going to pick an image. Okay, remember use the silhouette images if possible. They are generally the best images to use for our emboss. You can test out the colored images. Okay, the elevation, the relief is based on the colors. The resolution, drop it down to about 0 0.05. Do not embed the image file, otherwise you'll not be able to redefine your operation. Let's see how this goes. Okay, we're going to have to have a negative number in there. Want to redefine it? Okay, so negative 0.4. Let's give it a little rotation as well, and we'll drop it down a bit. Okay, maybe we can make that slightly bigger. So just play around until you get get the result that you want. Okay, so that's not a bad emboss there. I mean, it's not perfectly clean. If you want a very clean emboss, you should come in in your sketch and trace around with a point curve your design. Let's come in with these musical notes as well. Okay, so that looks alright really. Save our work. Okay, we can come in with something on the other side. I'm going to leave it for now just so we can move on. Okay, then we can begin combine adding some of our parts. Okay, if you want to combine add these two, our top and bottom ring shank. Confirm the operation. Okay, it's one shape now. Okay, so let's change the colors. Or maybe we want to try and combine add our halo ring top and the ring shank. Change our color. Okay, and that is the class ring. And we can come in with something else this side. That is a strategy to create a class ring. You could also have come in with the parve instead of the lettering here. Export rendering, live rendering studio. Drop it on the origin there. Be a live render. Okay, they're coming in a bit dark. Let's merge our rendering studio. Let's change the color of these. Let me move this one up a bit. decrease the intensity Okay, for rendering purposes, it is often nice to come in with a fillet on our sharper edges. 
just a small fillet to soften them up. Make sure I do a chain pick to make sure I get both sides. Okay, it just gives those edges a bit more definition in the render.